why is it always dark? Why is it always dark when we do our... I suppose it's, a, it's an outer planet, so that's why it's always dark. But we did our launch and it was dark. We did everything else, it was dark. It's just dark. It's just a dark time, isn't it? Right, we've got about 260, 250 meters per second to go. You can see we've we've been burning so long now that the uh, the previous stage is 70 kilometers behind us. Um, and it is on its way out of the system, so it's traveling at fair speed. We're doing about, what, 4,300 meters per second, which is actually, in real terms, is not much. Welcome back to Kerbalish. You find us on our way. Well, we're actually sort of on our way to Vesta with Vesta Dawn. Vesta Dawn is going to do a a, uh, a plane change maneuver type thing, try and get closer to its target very soon. So we're going to set that up now and um, hopefully it's going to be all right. So I'm actually going to do the um, the modifications in two different ways. We've got um, uh, Vesta dawn and Vesta dawn is going to going to basically do what i would consider to be a an inclination based change so we're going to basically we're going to do primarily changing the inclination at this uh, ascending descending node to get it close to vesta's inclination and then we're going to sort of tidy it up and that that's what we've plotted and you can see it's 1400 delta v um now I don't think it's the best way of doing it, but I, I wanted to try and compare the two because these craft are coming in at very similar positions. This is the easier one to plot because you change the inclination. It's really easy to find where you're actually, you've got an, an encounter sort of situation. Um, it is not the most efficient though, because once you're in the sphere of influence uh, of the sun, you are spending quite a lot of time and effort on other things. Oh, right, there we go. Need to uh, get ourselves in position there. We were on time warp, need to stop that. I don't know why it did that. It should have been warping to the correct position. We'll get that on there. Let's, uh, let's fire some engines. And this thing is, it's a minute and, and something long. It's actually a long burn. Um, and it's a lot of our fuel. Now we should have, have a look at it and we should have enough fuel still to land. But again, this craft doesn't have to land. It's, you know, we don't have a mission for landing. I'm probably going to have to send something else to complete a mission when we get a, a mission to land on, on Vesta. So this is just a, a, a test, really, to see what's going on. Um, and it's basically, it can it can do some of our, our science collection and stuff if we need it to. So that's what this is about. But we can also play around with it a little bit. So there we go. We're going to do that. We're going to take it to its position. We're going to let it get as close as it wants. Here we go. It's doing its little burny, burny, burny. Um, you can see we're going to have we're going to have what about two thousand left on this. It will be two thousand five hundred to capture roughly is what I'm predicting. So um, having having used all this, we're going to have to use some of the landing engine to actually to actually do the 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 capture, uh, which is fine. It's it's got plenty of fuel and you know Vesta is tiny. I mean the 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 reason that this is actually a, a hard rendezvous is because Vesta is tiny. Right there we go. Have we actually got an encounter now? That's the that's the important one. I think we do. Let's uh, where's Vesta? Where are you? Where are you? there you are? Right. Let's uh, focus view. How is my encounter looking? We are. It's not great. It is not great. Um, let's try. Oh, that, is that better? Ooh, that is uh, very close actually. Uh, you can see Vesta is not circular. Um, I don't know how it's going to swing. We should be okay at that point though. So we can add in our next sphere of influence change. There we go. It's going to get to Vesta in about a year and a hundred days. So a year and a half, year and year and year and a quarter, something like that. Right. So that was 1,400 um, or so. And the, the actual capture burn, if we do that, let's have a look. Just get that done. Oh, gone too far. You notice it, it doesn't take much toll. There we go. Just to circularize, 2,200. So we've got more than enough. And then, as you saw, once you're captured, the, the the speed around here is it's it's minimal shall we say um it used to i'm sure you used to see the velocity anyway you can see that there so so that's that's going to be the the burn for that now let's have a look at the vesta horizon so vesta horizon its burn is 93 and that's 94 meters per second it's coming from pretty much the same orbit there's only a slight difference in its orbit but we've gone if we have actually have a look at this if you can if you zoom in zoom in and look at the screen um what we can see is uh if i oh it won't let me do it why will it not let me click on to my next thing that's interesting uh it says there is not a maneuver you know what we're going to just uh going to we're just going to warp and and get to there that's really interesting it's not showing me this maneuver um it it should show me it oh oh it does move 
it just doesn't want to show me the maneuver. Oh, is it because we're in this thing? Oh, there we go. Oh, I didn't realize you couldn't do that in there. Anyway, that's interesting. This maneuver uses no normal anti-normal burn. It is all radial and prograde retrograde. And you can see that it is, it's, that's it. it. We've got a little bit of, a lot of radial burn. Okay, now this this is was a slightly better orbit. I will give you that, but we don't actually need to change the inclination. Okay, we just move it to a point where we're crossing its path at the right time. So there's, there's that, which is quite interesting. So we're going to time up to this and get this burn done. You can actually see it's only a three second burn. I think that really puts it into perspective. We're still going to have this stage left for our capture. When we finish this stage, we'll actually finish the capture. And then this thing, well, we could actually crash this into the surface. We'll hold on to it because it might be useful in the future, should we choose to do it. If we decide to put a, a crew down and put some sort of thing to measure impacts and stuff, the uh, seismic stuff, having stuff like this in orbit is actually quite useful. You can you can deorbit it and it can it can do things for you. Uh, so we'll do that. We'll keep it in orbit as long as we can. Right, we're just going to bring this along. And this burn is quick and, and dirty, really. It's just, uh, yeah, do, do that. Fire away. And there we go. We'll slow it down and take our time. And it, it is an easy little burn. We're going to stop it about there. And then we're going to take our time ever so gently. Just have a look at where are we going to stop it. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three two one there we go right so that should be zero that should be it that should be an encounter well let us now there's definitely something going on because the orbital track's changed so let's have a look at uh, focus view for that 90 meters per second how good of approach have we got i don't have a problem with that and uh, if, if we do this because it's such a small planet it's actually not going to give us a big bonus for the orbit earth effect so actually capturing is still going to cost us a chunk of, of time and money there you go um, there we are. So, so we're actually going into a circular orbit on this one, which is a lot higher, but would be good for comms. Uh, Two thousand five hundred. Well, there you go. We've got we've got plenty of that, um, so we can just get rid of that. So we'll put that one in as well. Done. Sorted. Perfect. Both those will arrive in a one year and a bit. Suppose we should probably launch this Saturn mission, shouldn't we? Right, welcome to the launch pad for the launch of a, another newish rocket. This is going to be the Saturn 1 Horizon. Let's get it going uh, and see what happens. It's got a bit of a slow go because, of course, we know that we might have a little bit of issue with these particulates and the and the graphics and things like that. It doesn't like it. The physics doesn't like it. But once we get up a bit, it sorts itself out. I think it's the solid engines that it's got a particular problem with. So we're going to get this going up. I am going to let it go up a little further upwards before I turn than normal because we don't have great thrust on this. We do have a nice like, gimbal, but we don't have great thrust. So we're going to let it go up to, I don't know, about 150 meters per second. Then I will start turn, I think. We'll just let it build up. So there we go. It's good to be here. Um, and yeah, and I'm not going to really show you much of this launch because, well, you've sort of seen this craft before. We used it for... Um, the launch of the Moon Tour 2, so that's uh, that's the first of these that we've, we've got going. We're going to just fire that over there. We've got the engines are about to cut out now. There we go. Get rid of the first set. There we go. No solids on this craft, remember, so it's, uh, it's a little slower to get going. All right, we just hold this like this, and uh, this thing will just head on up there. Um, I do believe... Have we got... Have we got... Um, tra tra yeah, yeah, we do. So we do have that there we do have fuel ducts so this center stack stack will just stay full of fuel okay this this engine is going to burn for a, a long time the, the skipper is going to go for a long time more than i would normally use a skipper for because it normally doesn't have that much fuel on board but we'll we'll see how it goes right i'm going to get this up there and i shall see you hopefully in orbit right our last set of boosters have gone they are aware and now we've got the anemic power of this engine this is um it's not powerful, okay? It's uh, it's thrust at the moment. What are we actually running at? We're running at 0.82 thrust to weight ratio. So we're actually technically slowing down. We would be. We're not. We're actually managing to maintain a bit of climb, but that's mainly because we've got lateral velocity and things like that going on. Um, you can see we are getting our apoapsis up there, but it's going to take a while. Get rid of that fairing. That's excess weight. 
uh, you can see why this is having a struggle because we've got a big set of tankage up here we've got a nuclear engine up there we've got some tanks down the center we've got these little tanks here and then we've got our little probe on the top with loads of science equipment things like that on so there is actually quite a lot of mass that this thing is pushing uh, and it does it does does take its toll it takes it takes a while right let's have a look what are we looking at for incleonation um i don't really care about it if i'm honest with you um can i can i bring it down a bit can we do that yeah we can right put it there put it there we'll just we'll do that it's it's not a big loss for our thrust but it might help us uh, it might help us a little bit in our transfer if we actually get a nice sort of alignment we're actually aligning to the moon because i tend to and i do this in rp1 i align to the moon i align to the moon for my interplanetary probes even if it's not actually what needs to be done because it's a better zero out than 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 anything else very much uh, you can see yeah our perhaps is coming up now we're gonna i think we're gonna be okay i think we should be fine I was all, I'm always paranoid about these when they've got low thrust because Kerbal is very not a low thrust game. It's like a you know high thrust, high high tempo sort of thing. Right there we go. What's that? That's 99 by 99. Superb. Right now Saturn is easy to get to because it's big. So you get into the sphere of influence easy, and then you can it actually getting getting your maneuver node to put you in the sphere of influence. I always find is the hardest bit. Right there we go. Where do we want to come in? How do I want to do it? What we're going to do. Right, we are currently flying through Saturn's, in fact, inside Saturn's rings, is it? I think it might be. It might be inside Saturn's rings. So I think that's good. What I'm actually looking at is I'm looking at the plane here and I'm trying to put that periaps reasonably near that plane um, because we can fix we can fix everything else. So we're going to come in here. We're going to exit that way. So that if we go into orbit, it's going to be going the wrong way. Yes, it is. Uh, right. So we're going to come in at the back there, leave at the front, which means when we go into orbit, oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, right, when we go into orbit, we're going to be going this way, which is the same as all the others. We could target Titan, which would be quite nice, um, or we could actually, we could start on the outside, get the Lepetus. Um, anyway, we could, what we can do is we can capture and then we can figure it out. So that's going to be that there. What I should add that's I think quite interesting is our node is, it's a five minute burn. Start time is about a minute after the it'd be a minute before in effect when the node is going to be. So because we're front loaded, we've got 150, we've got, we've got over half, over half of the, the Delta V is coming from a stage that's going to burn out in, in a minute. We're actually burning with the nuclear engines after that. It actually means that it, it, it has actually balanced it out a bit, which I think is quite good. I think it's very easy to, to mess up and just go over at half time, particularly when you've got split stages like this. And uh, we can fire this engine now. There we go. Fire it away. Get going. So I will get this burning and I shall see you um, if something happens. Why is it always dark? Why is it always dark when we do our... I suppose it's, a, it's an outer planet, so that's why it's always dark. But we did our launch and it was dark. We did everything else, it was dark. It's just dark. It's just a dark time, isn't it? Uh, we're going to do speedy up There we go. Speed that up. Right, we've got about 260, 250 meters per second to go. You can see we've we've been burning so long now that the uh, the previous stage is 70 kilometers behind us, um, and it is on its way out of the system. So it's traveling at fair speed. We're doing about what 4,300 meters per second, which is actually in real terms is not much for Kerbal. Quite a lot. It's a it's a bit of a whack. Right, under 200 now. Yeah, another another minute to go or so, and then we should be done. So what we can see there is we gone too far, I think. Right, let's um, let's zoom in. I think I'm going to need a retrograde burn. Uh, pull it back. Oh, what's that? What is that? We've got some interesting encounters going on here. Now, the positive is we might have got a lot of a lot of our sort of no, our normal burn and stuff done. So that that should hopefully still be okay. No, it's not. Nope, none of it's done. Okay. This is gonna be annoying. Oh, so annoying. So doing a little bit of a retrograde burn, but mainly a normal burn. Uh, so it shouldn't be too much of a negative for us uh, if we don't start perfect. Right, there we go. And I think we'll start now, there we go. Uh, instant plume there, instant plume from the nuclear engine. Um, I do like it. I, I like the way the engine warms up gradually. Um, I don't like the way that we've got those struts stuck on the bottom of there. It looks very bad. So you can have a look inside. There you go. There's the, the nuclear engine surrounded by its fuel tanks. What we could have done is actually have the fuel tanks decouple to make it more efficient. I chose not to do that because, well, it was more faff. 
um, I don't think we will get, you know, we, we don't have a problem with the fuel right now. I'm going to be honest with you. This thing can do jo jolly all the way around the um, the Jovian, not Jovian system, the Saturnium system. I can't remember what Saturn's short term is. That is a leave the solar system approach. Okay, am I actually hitting the planet? I, I do not see a periaps. That's because there isn't one. Okay. Uh, so we probably um, are going to need to create one, which it gives us an opportunity, actually. It gives us an opportunity to put our periaps uh, here. So let's we'll do that when it when the time comes. Um, if I forget, we're going to go straight into Jupiter. Um, but we could potentially, we're going to be, hold on a second. Yeah, we're going to come in this way. We're going to come in this way. We could potentially get into a really nice position here. Okay, that's good. When is this getting anywhere? It's Saturn horizon, eight years. Oh, wow, that is a long time. We probably colonized the moon and Mars by then. Well, maybe not Mars. Definitely, we will have been at Siri. We'll probably have got something to Jupiter by then. So that is a that is a long-term one. Right, let's go sort out these tourists finally. So we're now following our moon tour too. And you can see it's actually, it, it's actually just been near the moon or where the moon's going to be. And we've got to do a full orbit before we get back around to where the moon is then going to be so that we can actually have an encounter with the, the moon. Um, we have 5,509 meters per second, so we can we can do pretty much whatever we want. We could probably, I mean, I don't think we could land this thing on Kerbin, oh sorry, Earth. We couldn't land a thing on Earth, but we could take it to another planet, actually. Um, let's just fire the engines, get the f engines fired. Oh, you can hear them. If you listen very carefully, you can hear the nuclear engine doing its thing. Right, and there we go. Now we're going to do it. This is this is it. This is the one. We're going to go to the surface, relative to surface. We're going to put ourselves in the retrograde. We've got the sun. We've got everything we need. This is going to be good. I can feel it now. I can feel it. Right. Oh, we're a bit stuttery. Why are we stuttery? Right. Fire fire the engine. Right. Here we go. We're going to come out, come out of orbit. And um, what we've done is we've actually gone past our periaps, which is good. So we're going to create a new periaps on the other side. So this now becomes our apoapsis. Um, is it? Yes, it actually is going to be our apoapsis. We're going to we're going to basically um, do that. Okay. Um, we can we can speed this up a bit. It's very bumpy looking down there. Actually, I'm not sure we've chosen the right place to land. My concern is this thing falling over. I have not saved. I will not save. There is no saving in this in this thing. We've got eight kilometers. Um, okay. I think we're definitely you know what we're going to end up um doing what i didn't want to do i don't want to hit the top of that that bit there that is where i want to come down actually that flat bit there um yeah just keep burning in fact we're going to do that i'm going to slow us down as much as possible um and then put us back onto our retrograde and do that and there we go right that looks hilly. Mm. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to point upwards. I'm going to I'm going to just slow us down a bit. <laughs> uh, do that. Let's have a look. I want to just hold us up a bit. There we go. Yeah, that's good. Stop us falling. Let us drift sideways so we can get over this bit, which looks a bit flatter. Um, I hope. How are we doing, team? Are we having fun? Are we going good? Yeah, it's good. So, oh, there we go. We're now we're now heading up and down again. Right, okay. Let's put us into retrograde. Um, let this thing go a bit. And there we are. Right, that's as good as I want to go. By the engines. Let's slow it down. Uh oh, might be a bit late. Uh, well, we're past the big hilly bits anyway. Um, <laughs> I don't care about losing too much fuel here. It's more about losing kerbals. That's the concern. Right, here we go. Coming down. We've got kilometer. Oh, yeah, we've got loads. We are, we are good. We are golden. We are golden. And, of course, the good thing is not only do we finish the touristy contracts. We've got, I think there's two of them that require this. Um, and not only do we finish the touristy contract, but we also get two kerbals back. Now, they are both engineers. So... I'd have liked the scientist. I was actually considering, and this is a pop thought that popped in my head, if we'd actually got them um, when we were around the moon, drop if they were scientists, I could have dropped them off um, at the station and then just left them there. However, the mission would not have been completed to recover them. 
which I think is quite interesting. You could, they would become part of the crew, but they wouldn't have returned home. So the mission would still be open to fin sort of recover them. And we'd have had to bring them home another time, but they could have been scientists, uh, which is quite funny. All right, what's the thrust to weight right now? Um, 0.96. Oh, it's because I'm down here. Okay. That's interesting. So it's about at a third. So it's almost three. Our thrust to weight is almost about three right now. We are coming down reasonably fast. Just put a little bit more into it. There we go. Let it cool. Let it cool down. I say cool down. We're going to land where there isn't rocks finally. That's going to look not at all terrible. Um, it'd be nice if it generated the rocks once it knew where you were going to land. Um, we're going to slow it down a bit more. There we go. And come on. Come on. Take it down. I'm going to slow us down a bit. Oh, no. To balancing it. Balancing it. 0.3. Down. Uh, 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 uh. Yes, there we go. Okay. Ooh, we are down. Right, what have we got? We have got tourists landed on the moon. 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 Right. So that means we should have... If we go down on here, we should have some just return missions. Let's have a look. Mars flyby, since flyby. Have they gone? Where are they? There's the two. There's the tourist ones that we haven't done. Right, that's done. That's done. That's done. There's three there done. That's done. That's done. That's done. There's three there done. Superb. Oh, you know what? If we'd have put a science lab on this, we could have completed this. I never thought about that. Right. Time to uh, to get going. Oh, actually, I'm going to have to find one of these that is one of our crew. Uh, no, not you. Uh, Elkan, can you do an EVA report? Where are we? Midlands. No, nope, you can't. It's rubbish. We could get some samples out, but I'm not doing that. That's, uh, that's the way to craziness, isn't it? Right. Um, I suppose it's time to go. So there we go. Um, go straight up and then go 90. Probably is the best way to do it. Like that. There we go. Um, pull this up a bit. And then there we go. Superb. How are we looking? Oh, we're doing We're doing well. We're doing well. We're getting up there. Right. Uh, is this actually going to be the correct orientation around a planet? Um, I, you know what? Is it? Yes, I think that looks all right. Okay. Yeah, that'll that'll do. That'll work for me. That will work for me. Orbit is looking good. Okay, we'll do that. Uh, we've got 17, 18, 16 seconds to uh, to periaps, uh, apoaps. Uh, we should be all right. We should be able to just get this thing into orbit. Oh, actually, didn't think about mountains, did I? Oh, that could have been embarrassing. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, that would have been embarrassing. If anybody has seen um, one of my series, ah, it was it was uh, hard and uncut, hard and uncut. We actually did a thing where ah, it's very close, actually. Yeah, that is that is a little closer than I would have liked. Um, hard and uncut had a really interesting situation where I I took off from was it Dres or something like that? I took off from Dres, and um, yeah, I I looked around and then I didn't realise that I'd hit the surface. I think was the thing, or a mountain had come up. Something I was doing something. Was it a probe? I can't remember. I don't think a Kerbal was was murdered in that situation, but it wasn't it wasn't a pleasant situation. Let me just put it that way. Right, I'm going to get this thing all the way into orbit, and then we can get them all the way home, hopefully. Right, we are now approaching Earth. We did our burn. We did all that sort of stuff. You can see we've we've got about three thousand meters per second left. So I'm not entirely sure what to do with all that fuel, with all that time that we've got to use that fuel. Uh, put this back onto normal thing um what i think i'm going to do is i think we're going to just try and slow this craft down uh so we've got uh six five four three two i think at a one one thousand yeah we'll do that so what i'm going to do is i'm doing my usual trick of we'll, we'll point it towards the nope we won't do that we'll point it up like uh yeah we'll point it up a bit there like that and then we'll just fire the engines um there we go. We had a delay on the engines again there. That's interesting. Why am I getting a delay on my engines? Um, let's see. I want to I wanna point up a bit. I want I want to get some more verticality to, to my speed, please. Oh, actually, wrong way. I want to go that way, don't I? That's what I want to do. <laughs> Whoopsies. Um, 
I want to go this way. <laughs> uh, do I want to go that way? You know what? Just just slow the entire craft down, sea monsters. You can actually land this thing with this level of Delta V. Um, here we go. Just just do that. Just, just, come on, just do that. Slow the whole thing down. We'll we'll be fine. We'll be it'll be fine. It'll be it'll be work. It'll be work awesome. There we go. We've got so much. I don't think we can use all of this fuel, even if we wanted to. We've got you know. Oh, what's that? Five minutes. It's like, oh, so it's like nine minutes of, of burn we've got on this. So yeah, we're gonna be we're gonna be well sorted, things, stuff, and things. Uh, there we go. Let's just do that to normal. All uh, right. At some point we will decouple. Um, we're not in a hurry to do it yet. Uh, what's my ablator like? It is not being eaten. So yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, we could take the landing gear in. That'd probably be a good idea. It gives a bit more stability. There you go. The uh, Oddly enough, the, the, uh, the solar panels are still on. Uh, I wonder whether they actually get protected because it's the base of them. I wonder whether it looks at this bit that sticks out or it just looks at the base. Um, the heat shield is still not being used for anything. Our engines are going like crazy. Um, yeah, this thing's definitely going to be landing. Let's put it this way. Um, it's whether we actually... Um, whether we... Uh, <laughs> whether we actually burn anything up on the way down first. I'm not seeing any symbols showing that we're overheating. It'd be nice, it'd be nice if we didn't. Photovoltaic cells have finally gone. Okay, at 30,000, uh, 30 kilometers up. Wow, that's a strong solar panel. I wonder, I don't think that would be accurate in the real world. Let's be entirely honest. Uh, what's the thrust like on this? It is uh, pitiful, pitiful, pitiful thrust. It, we are gonna have to get rid of it. Um, but it is a nice little um, break, isn't it? Oh, do I dare try and land the whole thing? It's heavy. I don't want to try and land it. So what we're going to do is we're going to... Uh, we're going to do that. There we go. So it's going to go down. It's going to keep firing its engine. That's fine. Right. That's lovely. We're just going to irradiate the ocean. I don't know where we're coming down. Looks like ocean. I'm sure it'll be fine. Right. Uh, we'll pop the parachute. There we go. Um, we can just uh, time warp this down now. It will get down, it will open, it will do all its stuff, and we get our eight people back, six tourists, two crew, because of course they needed attendants, flight attendants on that long flight. We could have done the six tourists in in four days. Instead, they've had 77 days they've had their trip. I think that might be a record for a trip to the moon. 77 days to go to the moon. They spent about five minutes on the surface, if that. I don't. I think it was probably less than that. You could probably go back and check the video. It was literally two seconds. Um, it, well, not two seconds, but it's 30, 30. I don't even think we took a picture. Did we take a picture? I don't think we did. Um, so yeah, that's uh, if the script thumbnail for this one is a picture of them on the surface, it means I've done it again because that I did not take a picture of that. That is staggering. Um, yeah, so eight, eight Kerbals to the surface and back to Earth. How exciting. Well, that's done. I suppose we can get on with some something else now, space station building or launching some other craft or doing some missions. We'll, we'll see what happens, right? Let's get these locked down. Um, we'll get our two new crew. That will finish those missions and we'll no doubt get some more crew we have to rescue. Um, I might expand the astronauts complex just so I can get some scientists because, yeah, I think we need some scientists. We need to get some science going. Actually, we've got a lot of science we could probably collect, isn't there? Oh, how are you doing? How's that going for you? Okay. Wonderful. That's that. That's the picture, isn't it? We've we've rescued them. They're home. Right. Uh, recover the vessel. Let's go. So if that was good for you, check out on the screen right now some links. You can see other videos you might like. Check out the channel. See if there's any playlists you like. There's also some links to other content creators there you might like. Or leave a comment down below. Like, subscribe, do all those things.